So, hello everyone. Sorry, we had some technical problem and it is solved now. So let's start again. I'm Vincent Legros, uh, marketing officer for uh, Mercator Ocean International, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to this uh, last debriefing session. Uh, today's topic will be four topic. We will have physical product uh, uh, debriefing session with uh, Emanuela Clementi uh, from CMCC. She will be assisted with uh, Massimiliano Drudi and Alessandro Grandi from CMCC as well. Then we will talk about uh, bio, uh, bio model product with our experts from the National Institute of Oceanography and Experimental Geophysics, Jean Piero Cossarini. Then we will talk about wave model products uh, with uh, our team from the Hellenic Center of Marine Research, uh, Anna Zakariudaki, Michalis Ravdas, and Gerasimos Cores. And to finish, we will have a debriefing session and GIS tool with our partners from Noveltis, Vincent Mopa and Mathilde Cancé. Uh, just to explain you how it works, uh, we choose the most relevant question you ask during the webinar session held the 3rd of July. We will come back, our expert will come back to, to this uh, question in more detail, and that will give you time to ask your question live. So this debriefing session is done for that. Ask live your question, okay, using the chat platform, and you add a question mark at each question you want to ask. I hope I was clear. Um, I leave the floor to Paola Agostini, the moderator, and she will introduce our first experts uh, of physical web products. I wish you a very pleasant uh, debriefing session. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, also from me. And uh, we are happy to reconvene with all of you participants. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed and the practice with the uh, notebooks uh, for all the physical part uh, of the, the training, and that you have a lot of questions for <laughs> the experts of today. Uh, but as uh, Vincent said, uh, we are going to start uh, with a uh, uh, few of the questions uh, which were already uh, posed uh, during the first webinar, uh, and then uh, uh, we will uh, uh, look at uh, your questions in, live in the chat. So the first... Uh, uh, part is dedicated to the physical modeling, uh, to the products uh, of the physical modeling. And uh, the, the main expert uh, answering questions starting would be Emanuela Clementi, uh, and then uh, also Massimiliano Dudi and Alessandro Grandi will be available for other additional details. So, sorry. So, uh, here, Emanuela, you can uh, proceed with your uh, presentation. Okay. And thanks, thank you. Paolo. Thank you, and good morning, everybody. So I go uh, to the next slide. Okay, here I am. Um, so we, as Paula mentioned, uh, we have selected several uh, questions uh, that uh, you posed during the, um, after the, the webinar two weeks ago. The, the first one uh, uh, is a double question on uh, the river runoff implementation in the Mediterranean Sea. So um, the question was, can you clarify how you schematize river runoff in the model, average discharge or real-time data? And then another uh, similar question was posed, have you considered using real river discharges instead of climatological data sets in ocean models? So I would like to give you some more details uh, on that uh, on the river implementation that we have in the Mediterranean Sea physical uh, modeling system. Um, you see here in the top um, panel a, a picture which represents the bathymetry of the Mediterranean Sea in uh, the of the domain of the modeling system, which includes encloses also the um, a part of the Atlantic uh, uh, Ocean. And there you see. Uh, green and uh, red circles which represent the rivers which are implemented in our modeling system. 
First of all, I have to say that we have uh, um, a different implementation between the near real time system, which is uh, the analysis and forecast system at 124 uh, horizontal resolution. Here, uh, for that system, we have implemented 39 reverse uh, um, inflow, which are um, characterized by a mean discharge of about more than uh, 50 cubic meter per second. And uh, so the red and green uh, circles in the picture. While for the reanalysis system, which has uh, actually a, a lower resolution at 116 of a degree in horizontal. And for that system, we have implemented seven uh, major river runoffs. The one represented with the green circles in the picture and are characterized by more than 100 cubic meter per second as a, a mean uh, discharge. But I have to say that in the new uh, reanalysis, which will be delivered in December this year, we will align uh, to the near real-time real system and also the reanalysis uh, uh, will be, um, in the reanalysis, uh, you will see 39 rivers implemented. And um, we are using monthly climatological runoff, uh, which are uh, collected from literature and from uh, Perseus project data set. And in that case, uh, we have uh, built the climatological runoff, uh, monthly climatological runoff, uh, considering uh, 10 years uh, um, mean average uh, discharge between 2000 and 2010. Um, in addition to the river discharge, we also impose uh, uh, salinity, prescribed salinity at the river mouth, uh, which is larger than uh, zero. So uh, for the um, red uh, circles, the, the 32 uh, rivers uh, we have, uh, added in the near real time system, uh, we applied um, 15 PSU uh, salinity, uh, while for the other seven, we have associated a specific river uh, salinity at the river mouth, considering uh, um, several sensitivity experiments and comparison with literature and with observations. Mm, another information is that rivers in our case are imposed as a surface boundary condition, so imposed at the first uh, levels um, of the model, and a specific treatment is imposed close to the river mouth uh, where we uh, use an upstream advection scheme, uh, which is uh, much diffusive than the muscle scheme that we are using in the whole domain. So I hope this answer the, the questions and um, uh, yeah, uh, to answer to the um, real time data, I have to say that uh, in the um, following uh, near real time uh, system delivery, which will be in uh, March 2021, uh, we are um, upgrading the uh, river runoff implementation by using where available uh, real time uh, runoff um, data. So going to the next uh, question, which was related to the quality of our system, um, it was uh, which acceptances uh, do you use for simulation in layer depth? Are they validated through in situ data? So I keep uh, the chance to uh, give you some more details on the quality assessment that we uh, perform. Um, which is um, performed in, in different steps. First of all, uh, we, we have a um, qualification assessments of our product in a pre-operational phase. So when we are um, building the new uh, modeling system, we perform a, um, a quality assessment, a validation of the system with respect to both satellite data, in situ data, um, were not available, uh, we also compare with the climatologies uh, and uh, to literature uh, data. You can find all this information in the quality information document, uh, uh, the QUID, which is uh, uh, available on the catalog together with the data. And here I, I show you just a couple of tables that we provide in this uh, document, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, extensive and uh, uh, provide information not only at the surface, but also at the depth. And for example, here you see for temperature and salinity, 
we provide uh, a mean, uh, which is the bias uh, and the root mean square difference of the model with respect to the um, in situ data set, which are CMEMS data set, um, for different vertical levels uh, from the surface up to 2000 meter. And um, yeah, and, and you can see there uh, the, the different uh, uh, error and the different skill associated to the tracers. And then once the, uh, the system enters in operation, we perform a, a routinely operational validation assessment. One of that is published uh, every month on the Copernicus Marine uh, Service website. It's, uh, uh, you, you can see there the, uh, the website, the, the, the link to the page where we provide the validation of the analysis, but also on, the, uh, on several days of forecast on the uh, operational system. So it is uh, um, an up-to-date uh, validation of our uh, modeling system. And we provide this information for the temperature, salinity, sea level, and sea surface temperature. And uh, as you can see here, you have the chance then to click on the different layers so you have this information from the surface up to the uh, up to 2000 meter below 2000 meter we have only few data for that we usually do not uh, show the um, the scale of the system uh, uh, below 2000 meter because of uh, um, a poor uh, coverage of the data and here again you see as a metric represented the, the root mean square error and the bias in addition to that, uh, we have also built a CMCC validation uh, uh, website. And here you see the link, if you would like to have more information, where we present, the, among the others, uh, the root mean square uh, error in terms of time series for temperature and salinity at different depths. In this case, it's not a, an averaged uh, metric in a, a specific layer, but it is um, a depth, uh, a root mean square error uh, at a certain depth. Here I, I, plot, I provided only a couple of uh, layers, but um, in, we have uh, um, several time series uh, at several depths for temperature and salinity. And we also provide Hofmuller diagrams, which provide you um, a wider uh, view of the error. This is a root mean square error for temperature and salinity up to 1000 meter in time. And uh, for example, here, what it, it is clear for temperature, we have this larger error at around 30 up to 60 meter depth in the um, summer period when we have a deformation of the thermocline and uh, where, which is the uh, major, let's say, um, it is the, uh, uh, where we have largest error because the, the, the thermocline has, um, is, um, we have, it, it is not um, so easy to represent uh, this, uh, the, the, the thermocline and the uh, uh, correspondence with the, with the data. Well, for salinity, you can see here uh, um, quite homogeneous error up to uh, 100, 150 meters depth, uh, while the error decreases uh, at the bottom. So moving to the last question that has been selected, uh, uh, it was related to the Venice high water plot uh, that I showed uh, during the webinar. Uh, you just linearly add the astronomic tie to the storm surge predicted from the model. Yes, the answer is yes here. And uh, I, I reported here another picture, which is quite different with respect to the one that I showed. Here I reported for this location, which is uh, 10, kilom uh, yeah, 10 kilometers from uh, out of the lagoon uh, in the um, Aqua Alta uh, Venice uh, Ismar station. Uh, I represented the forecast, uh, uh, forecasted sea level uh, for the first, second and third day. And uh, as well, um, the dashed line, which represents the tidal signal, which has been extracted from uh, a barotropic tidal model. 
So yes, I just uh, uh, linearly uh, added the tidal uh, sea level, but uh, uh, we have to consider also the offset uh, uh, with respect to, to the uh, to the data set in, in, the, in this case. And with this uh, answer, I would like also to answer to another question, which was related to the availability of our uh, modeling data for uh, uh, coastal areas or higher um, or um, specific area. So our modeling system covers uh, uh, the whole Mediterranean Sea, as you see from my first slide. But, um, for example, uh, doesn't cover, in this case, the uh, Venice Lagoon because uh, the resolution of the model is around 4, 4.5 uh, five kilometers. And for that, uh, um, our data are uh, available in order to nest with higher resolution model, which uh, can be implemented in uh, specific areas and coastal areas. So I think I concluded my first uh, uh, set of questions. Okay. okay, thank you, Emanuela. Uh, we are waiting for questions on the chat. There is one in, in the meantime, but uh, uh, that we are going to answer. But uh, really, we are looking forward to have more questions. So this is the moment for you, all you participants to to type in the in the chat. So I'm going to uh, send you, Emanuela, the first question for you. Is it possible to survey seawater turbidity due to runoff using remote sensing? And if yes, uh, what is the confidence of the data and resolution? Oh, well, I have not a clear answer to that. Um, we should uh, ask these questions to the uh, satellite uh, the expert. uh, experts. Uh, we have not yet uh, used this information to um to, 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 to survey the, the runoff turbidity. So I have not, um, I, I, at the okay. moment, uh, an answer to the questions. We will pass it on to the other experts. <laughs> OK, yeah. so okay, there is another question. OK, what is the criteria that you used for detecting the mixed layer depth? Yes, uh, we use the sigma criterion. So um, in uh, NEMO, which is the modeling system that we are using, you can choose among different criteria. Uh, the sigma, um, the sigma criteria is the one that uh, that we used. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Questions are coming. So this is another one. It's uh, what is the relationship between salinity and SST? Uh, well, uh, we have the <laughs> equation of state, uh, and uh, uh, so the density of, of the water. I don't know exactly. Uh, the, uh, well, this question is uh, uh, quite uh, general, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, you, you, I don't know if it is meaning about the relationship between the error in salinity and the the surface temperature. Um, yeah. So maybe if uh, Sabat Sabaig uh, would like to, to, to write uh, some more details uh, about the question, uh, so that may it may be uh, easier to, to answer or at least to get the, the, the right answer. So if you can type. Uh, OK, I think it's typing. So okay. <laughs> in the meantime, uh, I pass to, to the another question. And it's about the tidal model that you used for the Mediterranean as boundary conditions, for example, in the Adriatic. So actually, we have not a, a tidal model implemented. Uh, as I've shown in my exp um, example uh, uh, for the Venice Lagoon, uh, there uh, um, we did this exercise to check the uh, the skill of our modeling system in forecasting the aqua alta event that occurred in November 2018. And for that, uh, we used, uh, we just imposed a sea level tidal elevation from TPXO uh, model. 
but uh, I have to say that we are working for the next release in March 2021 to provide, uh, um, to deliver a, a modeling system which includes tides. So in that case, we will force the, the Atlantic uh, open boundary with the tidal signal uh, for uh, using um, amplitude and phase for sea level and currents. And in that case, we are um, testing uh, several uh, uh, boundary conditions which are derived uh, from FAST 2014 and also from TPXO. And, uh, and for currents, we are also uh, checking uh, to go uh, to go model um, car tidal currents. I don't know if I answered the question, but um, yes, the, the, the most important thing to say is that actually we have not a tidal model. Yeah, uh, so if you download our products, uh, you won't find the tidal signal in our products now. If you uh, need to uh, prescribe this information at the boundary, you should uh, um, impose a, a tidal signal from a barotropic tidal model, for example. Okay, okay, thank you. So, next question is about the reliability of the physical model in the vicinity of the state of Jebelkra. How do you feel this contour forcing data? Um, First of all, uh, in order to better represent the, the flux uh, at Gibraltar Strait, uh, we have uh, implemented this large, quite large box in the Atlantic side, the one that I showed in my previous slide. Um, so uh, the most important here is to have uh, a boundary which is not too close to the strait in order to let the model um, say, um, represent the exchange uh, at the Gibraltar. Um, there uh, we had a good improvement in the representation of the transport uh, thanks to uh, an upgrade of the system that we had a few years ago when we in increased the resolution from uh, 6.5 to 4.5 kilometers in the horizontal and that uh, allowed us to better represent the strait, the bathymetry of the strait which has been also manually modified uh, and uh, according to sensitivity experiments that we performed. And um, we compared the transport with the, um, with the literature. So Soto Navarro 2010 uh, data um, uh, have been compared. And um, well, the, the uh, the currents uh, are well represented by in the strait. In the uh, let's say we, we mainly check the representation of the uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, uh, um, and there we have a good representation of the dynamics uh, uh, close to Gibraltar. Mm, yeah, uh, then uh, we compare also so with sea level anomaly data and uh, we assimilate sea level anomaly data uh, at the Gibraltar Strait and uh, we have a good representation of these uh, of the features uh, close to Gibraltar. Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, about uh, the questions before uh, about the link with salinity and SST, uh, the the participants uh, as uh, give some more details. We would like to know if how they are linked. If the if the higher the SST, in the sense that the higher the SST, the higher the salinity. I don't know. Well, uh, we have the equation of state which links the temperature and salinity, and um, mm, yeah. I, I don't know exactly. <laughs> it's a physical uh, process that uh, you have. Uh, uh, well, it's not really clear to me this question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Maybe we can interact uh, in a separate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So we will investigate more about this. Uh, uh, so we go with uh, another questions because we have many. <laughs> so this is about model validation. Uh, you compute, I guess, the mean and RMSD per depth layer for the entire basin or within sub-regions of the MED? 
Yeah, we compute for um, subregions and for the entire basin. What you can see in the, for example, in the Copernicus Marine Service website validation page, there you can see uh, for all, um, we, we selected 16 subregions in the Mediterranean Sea. And for that, we selected uh, nine vertical layers. And uh, you can uh, have information on the root mean square difference and uh, difference and bias in the wool uh, subbasins. Uh, um, and uh, different depths. While uh, in the quid, the quality information document for, uh, let's say, um, readability reasons, we, we provide only the Mediterranean Sea error and bias at uh, depth, so the, the whole basin. But on the website, you can see both the analysis and forecast uh, uh, metrics for the different subbasins and different depths for temperature and salinity. Okay, okay. There is another question is about uh, if you have mass conservation when using the data simulation. Uh, well, yes, what we have, uh, uh, we have not, um, so our basin is not closed. We have uh, open boundaries in both uh, the uh, Dardanelles uh, the strait uh, which connects to the Black Sea and in the Atlantic. So uh, we can uh, um, check the mass conservation just closing the boundaries. This is an exercise that has been done uh, in the past. Uh, but yes, we, we, we ensure mass conservation. Okay. I do not see other questions for the moment. Oh, yeah. One is I just arrived, so I'm going to publish it. Are you assimilating in the model trends in temperature and salinity in intermediate or deep waters, as some recent studies are suggesting? No, we are simulating um, in situ data. Uh, so we are not uh, um, probably relaxing to trends uh, or uh, no, we are assimilating um, in situ data different depth, also in, in, in intermediate depth waters, deep waters, sorry. Um, while, uh, for, for example, for the surface, uh, sea surface temperature, we are uh, uh, relaxing uh, to the sea surface temperature by correcting the uh, heat flux. Yeah, we are not uh, assimilating model trends. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, there are no other questions for the moment. Um, we, we, I leave you two other minutes maybe to type. Uh, there were, I, I'm happy to see that uh, it was a live <laughs> session, so there were questions anyway. Maybe if you have anything to ask about the, the exercise of the, of the notebooks, if you want to comment on the, on the exercise that were proposed to you. Uh, um, if you have any other, maybe curiosity, uh, any other questions about uh, uh, what you have uh, worked on? Okay, I leave one more minute. <laughs> it doesn't look like so. I suppose, I suppose everybody's happy. <laughs> Everything was clear. Okay, few few more seconds. <laughs> Last chance. Last chance. Yes. <laughs> then we disappear. <laughs> Okay, Francisco is writing, so let's wait. <laughs> I know it takes some time to write so on the chat, so there are these moments of pause. <laughs> okay, there is another question, actually two. Okay, one is, 
if uh, do you compare the output model to the uh, WOA products? Yes, uh, we we do. We first of all, um, our initial condition for uh, our um, experiments for, for our um, integration comes from WOA. Uh, in particular, we use uh, winter climatology uh, uh, starting our um, integration in January. And then uh, we compare, uh, we do not perform uh, a, a real quality assessment, we just compare time series of um, layer um, averages in temperature and salinity with respect to WOA. Um, we no, uh, yeah, we, we do not produce statistics, but um, but in the quid, uh, if I'm not wrong, you can find some uh, um, some comparison also with the WA World Ocean Atlas uh, climatologies. Okay. okay. So, so last question. Uh, it's the first part is: Do you find a good results of data simulation in? <laughs> and the second part is Argo data. data. Uh, yes, Argo data are the largest, uh, the, let's say, data set, in situ data set that we use because uh, we can find only a few CTD and XPT data in this period. And uh, we would like to have more data, of course, as usual, as modeler and um, uh, also, deep water uh, Argo data would be very useful to better check the accuracy of our, mo of our model uh, at depth. Actually, we have only a few measurements below 2,000 meters, for example, but uh, yeah, the, um, I think it's never enough, so we, we would like to have more for sure for data simulation and then for validation as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. I think we have uh, had uh, the wide range of uh, questions about the, the physical uh, model products. Uh, thank you, Manuela. Th thank you also to Alessandro and Massimiliano who were on the back. <laughs> and uh, so we also Thanks. remind you maybe that you have uh, the possibility to, to still uh, do the exercises with, in the notebooks in the next uh, okay. days uh, and Thanks, weeks Paul. after. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Paola. Thank you thank again, Manuela. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Bye. <laughs> so uh, we pass now to the biogeochemistry model products. So Gian Piero Costarini is going to uh, answer your question. Uh, first, uh, uh, we will start with the three of the questions of the uh, webinar of the July 3rd. So I leave the floor to Gian Piero. Thank you. Hey, hello, everybody. Um, good morning. I'm Gian Piero from the National Institute of Oceanography and Applied Geophysics uh, from Trieste, Italy. And I'm starting to reply to some of the questions that you posed uh, during the um, first session. So the first uh, question is, um, um, is a double question regarding the zooplankton formulation in BFM. So the first uh, part of the question is uh, regarding which variables of zooplankton are included in the BFM model, the biogeochemical flux model. And the second part is how to uh, validate this uh, important um, ecosystem uh, uh, um, variables. So uh, I would like to start showing uh, on the uh, on your left, uh, this very nice representation of the um, ecosystem, marine ecosystem, and uh, in the red box uh, are highlighted where is the position in the um, trophic uh, food chain, uh, the position of the zooplankton in the trophic food chain. So it's a connection between the lowest part of the uh, trophic ecosystem, the phytoplankton, and to the highest part uh, of the trophic uh, um, food chain, fish and mussels and uh, the uh, high trophic level uh, ecosystem component. Um, going to the detail of the biogeochemical flux model, the BFM model, that is uh, the core model of the biogeochemical component of the Mediterranean 
um, forecasting center. Um, zooplankton uh, is represented by four uh, functional groups. Uh, the four functional groups are the heterotrophic nanoflagellates, the micro zooplankton, the omnivorous mesozooplankton, and the carnivorous mesozooplankton. In the um, gray box in the center of the slide, you can see the diet matrix uh, that show how the different groups prey on uh, the four phytoplankton functional groups and on bacteria and also the interaction between uh, um, zooplankton groups. Um, more information about the formulation uh, the, uh, of, the, of each of uh, zooplankton functional groups can be found on the uh, official web page of the BFM model at the link in the blue that you can uh, see um, on the bottom of the figure. Um, I would like to remember that uh, starting from March 2020, so next release of the um, analysis and forecast uh, uh, Copernicus system, the total, zoo the total zooplankton in terms of carbon biomass will be a product uh, that you will find in the Copernicus, Copernicus catalog. So just uh, follow us uh, for the next release in next March, March 2021. Uh, validation is a very important aspect uh, of any Copernicus uh, products and there will be a validation of zooplankton uh, Variable. Uh, we will use uh, literature and published in situ data. Of, I, I have to uh, remind that I mean, uh, um, zooplankton data are not so, um, there are not so many data for that, so there will be some consistency analysis. Uh, and consistency validation for this variable. Um, another important thing that I would like to remember is that we are starting using the biogeochemical Argo optical data, uh, specifically um, back scattering uh, uh, optical data from uh, biogeochemical Argo in order to validate uh, biomass, carbon biomass of phytoplankton and particulate organic. Uh, matter. Um, it means that we are going to <clears throat> validate many variables of the biogeochemical uh, <clears throat> model, and this is um, um, uh, this provides us a sort of uh, consistency uh, analysis of the uh, fit for purposes of. Um, of the uh, biogeochemical model in describing the uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, marine ecosystem in the Mediterranean. Um, the second question uh, was about the uh, oxygen data that can be used for the MSFB uh, analysis and specific uh, how to extract the bottom value of oxygen uh, uh, from the uh, Copernicus product. So, uh, first of all, I would like to remind that all the biogeochemical products, as the physical products uh, as well, uh, are three dimensional fields. Uh, in this very nice representation, uh, you have um, 3D fields of oxygen for the Mediterranean, and uh, you can uh, appreciate the vertical uh, dimension. Uh, that is very important in a marine ecosystem. And uh, uh, if you are interested in the bottom layer of oxygen, you should download the three-dimensional field. The CDF file is the format of the information that you get. And then you should read this NetCDF three-dimensional uh, file and going uh, for to each of the uh, um, grid point in the horizontal grid point and look for the uh, deepest water vertical level. So the deepest water vertical level is represented in this in the uh, bottom right uh, figure in this slide are the cell with the dot with the red dots. So you should go to each of the grid points and select the last cell of the water column before the bottom. This information is also uh, contained in the bathymetry static file that you can find in the uh, 
Siemens catalog, uh, where you look at the uh, specific Mediterranean biogeochemical product. Um, then going on, um, uh, the last question uh, was about uh, the resolution uh, of the Siemens, uh, um, Siemens uh, uh, data, and especially when we look uh, uh, to coastal processes. Uh, the horizontal spatial resolution of the Copernicus data uh, are fixed. Uh, is uh, about uh, seven kilometer, one uh, sixtieth of degree for the uh, long term reanalysis uh, product, so the past data, uh, and is about a four point five kilometer, so one twenty fourth degree uh, for a solution for the analysis and forecast product, uh, so the one covering the present and the short term forecast. Um, of course, uh, if you uh, need to have higher resolution uh, data for coastal uh, area, uh, it's possible, but you need to have a specific model that are nested in the uh, um, specific model with higher resolution that are nested uh, within the uh, Siemens product. Um, just an example, I plot here in the uh, bottom right of this slide, uh, a map coming from the Cadur uh, I or a solution model for the Adriatic's, uh, Adriatic Sea. And here you can appreciate how the uh, resolution uh, of this model that is about one kilometer uh, allows to uh, describe very fine uh, features uh, uh, along the coast. Uh, of course, this is uh, this model uh, um, is not part of the Copernicus. It's part of ISPRA a collaboration between uh, uh, ISPRA and uh, OGS and additional information on this uh, uh, resolution model can be found uh, on the uh, ISPRA uh, web page. Yes, and uh, this uh, and yes, and thank you for uh, I mean, for these three uh, questions. Um, I think Paula, thank you, you can go. Yeah. Yes, yeah. There is actually uh, one question about uh, one of the uh, graphs you show, which is this yes. one, and it's about the tool or the language that you use to make the 3D visualization that we saw in one of your slides, the one of the... Uh, okay. Um, I don't know if you want to show it again. Yeah, I can go back now, okay. Um, the one with... Um, yeah. Made by a colleague of ours. Yeah, uh, it's very nice representation. It's work with Python. Uh, it's a, a 3D um, Python tool that we uh, developed uh, within uh, uh, some project of uh, graphical visualization. Yeah, it is a specific is a specific visualization tool that we, we have to, um, to explore uh, the three-dimensional uh, data uh, that the model provides. Um, yeah. I guess it's, that there was, uh, oh, there was uh, oh, sorry, Paula. Uh, there was a question before that regarding PCO2. Uh, I, I just uh, saw this question uh, at mm -hmm. the end of the physical um, presentation. Uh, um, in the, chat? Yeah, in, in the chat. It was, okay. uh, I mean, it was asked uh, before at the, the end of physical, but just to say yes, the ah, PCO2 okay. in the um, Partial pressure of CO2, um, CO2 concentration is a, a, a is a product of the biogeochemical uh, uh, biogeochemical model, and uh, uh, you can find in the catalog. Yeah, okay. I hope this was the question. Yeah, it was this one, I guess. <laughs> I, yeah. I found it. <laughs> 
Okay, thank you. Now there are other questions. So one is this one, is it possible to get data about nutrients in the MED in different depths uh, and what is the confidence of the data and the resolution? Okay, uh, yes, uh, the present uh, version of the product in the Siemens catalog uh, provide uh, the concentration for uh, nitrate and phosphate uh, as nutrients. Uh, um, the resolution, uh, vertical resolution, is the one of the models. So you have uh, uh, 140 layers. Uh, all these products are uh, three dimensional, as showed for the oxygen. And um, starting from March 2020, also ammonia and silicate will be part of the nutrients uh, product in the catalog. Uh, validation is made using in situ data uh, coming from uh, World Ocean Atlas uh, and Modernet uh, repository data set. And for uh, nitrate, also we use. Uh, um, biogeochemical argo. Um, a synthesis of uh, uh, the quality of uh, uh, the confidence or the level of confidence of, uh, of the data for nutrients can be found in the, uh, in the quality information document quid that can be found on the web on the um, Siemens uh, page of the biogeochemical products and also in the uh, central validation web page uh, of Copernicus uh, and also in the regional thematic validation center uh, um, specific for the biogeochemistry of the Mediterranean that uh, is the medef.ingo.ogs.it uh, but also this can be found also in the quid uh, uh, document um, in the catalog. Okay, okay, thank you. So another question is, is it possible to apply the CADU model to other zones of the Italian seas? Y yes, uh, is not CADU is not uh, um, the CADO uh, model was part of what is called a um, user uptake Copernicus project uh, and is a, a specific uh, project uh, I'm at developing uh, downstream services starting from the uh, core uh, Copernicus uh, system. Uh, it was a project uh, um, <coughs> uh, um, Made uh, between made by uh, OGS and uh, ISPRA, uh, the National uh, Protection Agency in Italy, and uh, uh, of course, if you are interested in collaborating for uh, applying uh, higher resolution model uh, for other uh, part of the Italian coast. Uh, we as OGS, but also I think uh, ISPRA are really happy to collaborate for that with, with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you do data simulation? Yes, um, actually the biogeochemical uh, uh, model assimilates two types of data, uh, the surface uh, chlorophyll uh, observation from uh, satellite uh, uh, sensors and also the biogeochemical algal profiles of chlorophyll and nitrate. And so we, in the uh, analysis forecast uh, product, uh, we run uh, every week, uh, one week of analysis, uh, assimilating all the available data of the past uh, week before going to the uh, daily forecast. Okay, I think you partially replied also to this question about the in-situ data for your models. Uh, yes, and in-situ data is used uh, for assimilation and uh, for validation when uh, data cannot be, uh, when, when data are not uh, are already used for assimilation. Of course, uh, biogeochemical Argo, as Emanuela uh, said for Argo, uh, the autonomous uh, 
observatory sensors are really, really important for the um, near real time uh, modeling system. And while we use all the uh, available in situ uh, data set, uh, reprocessed data set as uh, World Ocean Atlas uh, and Modernet uh, for the past, uh, past simulation and validation of the past simulation. Okay, so our next question is, uh, do you compute RMSD and bias for validation like the physical model or do you use other measures? Um, we use uh, uh, those two metrics, the root mean square difference and the bias as basic uh, validation metrics, but also uh, we use some specific metrics uh, to validate uh, uh, ecosystem processes. Uh, since we can use the biogeochemical algo float data that provide very important information about the vertical dimension of uh, many uh, variables like chlorophyll, uh, like biomass of uh, phytoplankton, like ni nitrate and also oxygen, we are able to calculate some metrics regarding how good is the model to um, reproduce the uh, deep chlorophyll maximum, the natric line, the steepest of the uh, natric line and other um, biogeochemical features, the minimum oxygen zone. So, just to look at the medef.ings.it uh, website to look at some of these validations that are really, really important to, uh, to understand uh, how the model is uh, good in reproducing not only the variables, but also processes. Thank okay, thank you. There is a question, I'm not sure actually it's uh, for you, but maybe you have an opinion, I don't know. Is it possible that the PRISMA satellite data sets with a more spatial resolution than the Sentinel maybe could be implemented in the future of the CMEMS products? Okay. I don't know. Probably yeah. It's well, out of your topic, but... Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Uh, actually, um, if I'm not wrong, uh, PRISMA satellite provide um, multispectral uh, optical data uh, that is really important for the future development of the biogeochemical model, uh, since uh, one of the component, uh, one of the uh, uh, development of the biogeochemical component is the inclusion of a full optical model and uh, uh, resolving all the interaction between uh, biogeochemistry and uh, optics, and so. Uh, sensors like Prisma are really important because of the uh, full uh, spectral resolution in the optical part. And of course uh, for uh, the eye resolution in the, um, if I'm not wrong, in the coastal area, probably. Yeah, we, we are, just to uh, conclude, uh, um, satellites are providing a very huge amount of information on the surface uh, of the of the water and it is really important and and that you use it by 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 the models yeah okay thank you there is another question about the in situ sensors for depth modeling um i'm not sure what uh, uh, i'm not sure what is intended for that modeling, uh, I would say uh, that most of the biogeochemical variables uh, provided by the um, provided by biogeochemical Argo, uh, that is the, probably the data set we use uh, most in the biogeochemical model, uh, provide data till uh, 600 meters, or we use data till 600 meter depth. Um, considering that the uh, most interesting part of the water column since the euphotic depth is reaching uh, 120, 150 meters in the eastern part of the Mediterranean, we are interested in mostly in the first 200 uh, meters uh, of the water column. But of course, the model uh, reproduce uh, the entire uh, water column till uh, 
the, the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea, where usually some processes are present, like revitalization, uh, but are really, really slow compared to the fast biological pro processes uh, occurring in the M40 layer. Okay. Okay, thank you, Gian Piero. There are people typing, so maybe you wait a couple of minutes uh, uh, to check. Uh, okay, there is a long question. Okay, I, I published it, but uh, as he says, it's also maybe not for you. So I would like to have an idea of how many satellite-derived products exist, in particular proxies to monitor predict organisms that the satellites cannot see. For example, a prediction of jelly patches, uh, coral reefs alerts, uh, MPA monitoring. Well, I don't um, know if you have an yeah. answer for that, but... It's a very, uh, very uh, interesting question. Very, uh, I would say, complicated uh, question. Maybe I just suggest that we can interact. Uh, uh, I don't know how. I mean, by email uh, with this uh, kind of question, because uh, yeah, and we can also check with other uh, experts, the, the satellite ones. Yeah. So you can the, the the participants can have a fuller uh, reply to the question. Okay. Let me check if there is. Um, I think. Uh, okay, anyway, converts the reply that yes, you interact, so that's fine. There is a question about bathymetry data. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's. Uh, uh, bathymetry it's data? Um, yeah. What? Uh, <clears throat> Um, within the uh, um, all the uh, three uh, com uh, components of the Mediterranean uh, product, so the physical, the biogeochemical, and the waste uh, component, um, are fully aligned. So they use the same uh, bathymetry, the same boundary condition, uh, and the same domain. Uh, and this kind of information is. Uh, um, is a static file uh, that you can find uh, in the web page uh, of the product. Uh, and and uh, the static file is, uh, is a net CDF file uh, containing the bathymetry, the topography of the model domain. Uh, I hope uh, this, uh, this answered uh, the question. Okay, thank you, Gian Piero. I do not see other questions. Uh, maybe I, I leave a couple of minutes, one minute or more, if uh, any other participants would like to type any question in the chat. About the biogeochemistry products. Again, even if you, if you have any question about the, the notebooks, uh, the exercises, any comment you would like to make, Someone is typing. Okay, so there are a couple of questions. One is, uh, is there an available model to use for now to evaluate organic carbon using uh, chlor chlorophyll? Chlor 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 um, well, uh, uh, just to say that, I mean, the biogeochemical flux model, BFM model, uh, use, uh, um, uh, describe the phytoplankton uh, functional groups in terms of carbon and chlorophyll and also uh, nitri um, also nutrients. Uh, and the ratio between carbon and chlorophyll uh, in the BFM model is not fixed because uh, we use a guider formulation. So it's changed because of photo adaptation and consume of respiration. Uh, and uh, in the catalog, uh, the Siemens catalog, we provide uh, uh, both the carbon biomass of phytoplankton and the concentration of chlorophyll. 
in, in the phytoplankton group. Okay, there is another question which I was I is implied, I guess. Do you feed the biogeochemical the biogeochemical model with a physical model in some step? Do you feed the um, the, uh, the two models uh, are offline coupled. It means that uh, the biogeochemical model is made of a transport uh, plus a reaction model. The transport that uh, account for uh, the trans the abduction and diffusion of the traces, I mean, all the biogeochemical model, use uh, the output of the physical models in terms of uh, currents and uh, vertical diffusivities. And also temperature and salinity uh, have an impact of some of the process of biogeochemical process and this communication between the physical and the um, biogeochemical model uh, is made every day uh, and with, the, with this change of the uh, physical with the output of the physical model to the biogeochemical uh, biogeochemical one so you, you you can you have in this uh, using the physical products and the biogeochemical products you can um, make any kind of elaboration or calculation with the data that are uh, fully uh, aligned and consistent okay okay thank you jean -Pierre. Uh, i think we may uh, move to, to the other uh, modeling part of the wave Thank you, jean -Pierre, again for uh, your time and your uh, uh, participation. So, uh, according to uh, the agenda, we've now passed to the to the wave modeling. Um, and so we have three experts. Actually, uh, uh, Gerasimo Scorres is going to start. So I'm waiting for the change in the presenters list. <laughs> in the meantime, I remind you to, to now, maybe you can start to uh, type your questions for the WAVE uh, model. Um, and, uh, and, but we will start with the, the three questions that were selected from the past uh, uh, webinars. Uh, and uh, the, the experts will uh, give you full uh, uh, details and answers uh, uh, as a starting. So, uh, Gerasimo Scorres will start. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot see him, <laughs> but he's okay, there. Hey, Jan. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me at least? Do you yes, hear me? <laughs> we do. Okay. We do. So I had yes. um, I had an issue with my camera. I cannot correct it, unfortunately. So uh, I'm Gerasimus Corres from uh, HCMR. I'm a physical oceanographer, a researcher here, and uh, we are uh, Anna Zakharyudaki and Michalis Zaras, and uh, also Dimitro Denaksa on board to answer your questions. So I will start with uh, three uh, questions, as the previous uh, experts did. Uh, and uh, let's see now. Oh, oh. Uh, OK. So the first question is uh, related to the uh, grid size of our uh, wave forecasting system. And uh, it is also related with the uh, row waves, spatial extent in general. Uh, rogue waves, uh, and uh, although I'm not, uh, and we are not experts on rogue waves, uh, we found it uh, an interesting uh, question to answer. So uh, uh, the resolution, uh, first of all, the resolution of our uh, uh, system, the Medway's uh, near real time or heat cast system, is uh, 124, so approximately 4 to 4.5 kilometers. Uh, and then uh, for the rogue waves. Uh, or the freak waves, as uh, they call them. Uh, these are transient uh, surface waves, abnormal, which means that their wave height is much larger than uh, what is expected expected for the sea state. Usually, there is a criteria that says that uh, if uh, the wave height is uh, uh, at least twice as large as the significant wave height, 
then we have to deal with a uh, rogue wave. Rogue waves are uh, 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 steep sided usually. Uh, they have unusual deep uh, troughs, uh, and mariners say that they look uh, uh, as uh, walls of water, uh, and they have a limited sp spatial extent. Uh, one thing for sure is that uh, we cannot uh, uh, predict them by, uh, by the deterministic wave model dealing with the uh, wave spectrum, like WAM, SWAN, or WaveWatch. However, uh, uh, what we can do, and uh, what actually what the ECMWF uh, for the time being does, is to predict the probability of the occurrence of extreme waves by using uh, deterministic predictions of uh, one model and uh, some state-of-the-art statistical models for maximum waves occurrence. And actually, within the uh, CMEMS, we had a service evolution uh, uh, project uh, that they recently finished called the Latimer. Uh, this project uh, 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 dealt with the uh, um, uh, extreme waves and what we will do in the future in, in med waves, we will exploit uh, the results of this project in order to be to, to, to establish uh, similar capabilities to ECMWF in order to uh, predict the probability of occurrence of extreme waves. Now, uh, some examples of uh, uh, rogue waves. Uh, the first example was given by Anna uh, during the webinar session. Uh, and this is the, uh, uh, the Louis Majesty accident example. What happened on uh, the 3rd of March uh, 2010, uh, a cruise ship, uh, Louis Majesty, uh, was traveling from Barcelona to Genoa at uh, uh, 15 UTC, a large wave, uh, hit the deck 5 out of 10. This deck is approximately uh, at, uh, 10 to 12 uh, meters height from the mean sea level. Two persons were killed. Uh, there were uh, several injured. The ship uh, reversed its route and went back to uh, um, Barcelona. Uh, on, uh, on the uh, top uh, left panel, you see a buoy, uh, the location of the ship uh, when the accident happened. Uh, the buoy, the buoy, uh, Begur buoy, measured a 5.2 meters significant width height. Uh, on the right, uh, the, on the right uh, panel, you see the heat cast of uh, Simem's wave, med waves. Uh, we uh, we are close uh, to, although we uh, underestimate a bit uh, with respect to the buoy. Our our uh, uh, simulation gives uh, 4.5 uh, meters. Uh, what uh, for sure is uh, uh, is that uh, the, the 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 rogue wave had uh, uh, um, a wave height uh, higher than eight meters, so uh, uh, the estimation is between eight and ten meters. Uh, and then um, this is an example that happened in the Mediterranean Sea. There are other example examples uh, occurring. Uh, I don't see the other example anyway. <sighs> Uh, there are other examples occurring in the North Sea or uh, in the Global Ocean, and uh, there are uh, many uh, incidents of uh, uh, ships that have been lost, and uh, that was due to the uh, to um, um, collision with a, a rogue wave. Uh, so let's keep from this uh, from this question that uh, presently we are not dealing with rogue waves, but in the future we will establish some capabilities in order to be able to predict the probability of occurrence of extreme waves. Now, the next question is uh, 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 about wave setup by Chiavola. Uh, um, uh, I tried to answer that question <laughs> very briefly during the webinar, uh, and actually we are not uh, giving a, a, um, a wave setup as an output. A wave setup is not a CMEMS product for the time being. Uh, what is the wave setup is the increase in mean water level due to the presence of uh, breaking waves uh, happens in the coastal areas. Uh, uh, in order to uh, to calculate it accurately, we need uh, a high resolution general circulation model, feed it with uh, um, data from a wave model uh, describing how the waves break. So uh, we need the momentum and energy flux transferred to the ocean by the waves as they break. And also, we can take it into consideration the stock drift velocity. However, uh, 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 the interested user can use uh, models like uh, SWAN. Uh, it is uh, uh, 
um, Delft University model uh, solving again the wave spectrum and solves a, a, a simplified equation for the wave setup. So if uh, the interested user uh, uh, nest uh, the uh, this one model with a uh, mid waves near real time or heat cast solution, uh, uh, he or she can have a, a first approximation of the wave setup in the in the coastal area. And finally, uh, the third question. Uh, it concerns uh, uh, the availability of wave spectrum. So in the catalog, there are 17 uh, products concerning uh, integrated uh, 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 parameters from the wave spectrum uh, for the whole uh, spectrum, uh, for the wind part and for the two swell partitions. However, in the MEDC, in order to uh, encourage the users to uh, uh, do uh, um, uh, downscaling of the uh, MedWave solution, uh, we decided uh, to offer uh, uh, the wave spectra, uh, hourly analysis and free hourly forecast uh, for the whole Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it is given in NCDF format and contains uh, the whole solution of the, of the model, so uh, the, around uh, uh, 246,000 uh, grid points, 24 directions, 32 frequencies. In order to get access to the data, uh, you needed to uh, send an email to the MedMFC service desk, and uh, we will give you credentials to download, to be able to download the uh, data, the uh, spectra from our FTP site. Again, it is not an official uh, CMEMS product, but we offer it. Uh, uh, we have discussed with uh, Mercator Ocean, with CMEMS, and we offer it uh, in uh, uh, MedMSC. So I think uh, this is for the three questions. Uh, we will be happy to answer uh, to your uh, questions, uh, the live questions now. So, uh, Paula, you can start. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Also for the presentation. I think there was uh, the other slide that you were mentioning. I don't know why they, they changed the position, but that was the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, this is the Drapner wave. Uh, the, this is a, uh, this is a, this is this is related to the first question. Uh, sorry, yeah. uh, uh, just to just to comment on that uh, on rogue waves. So the Drapner wave uh, is a famous one because it is, it is uh, scientifically studied a lot. Uh, it happened first uh, uh, January 1985. So uh, that, that's why it is called the Drapner uh, new, uh, new Year Wave. And it uh, reached the maximum height of uh, 25.6 meters in the North Sea. And uh, on, the, on the right panel, you see an interesting study uh, uh, relating uh, um, um, supercarriers assumed to be lost due to collisions with rogue waves for the period 1969 to uh, 1994. So you see uh, 20, uh, 22 cases uh, in different areas uh, of the uh, global ocean. Uh, so, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Paola, for bringing this uh, uh, slide. Okay. And uh, let's continue with... Uh, yeah, with uh, the questions. Uh, with the questions, yeah. All right, so I have the first one is, uh, uh, let me... Pass to your question, and this is the first one. What is the difference between the height of the waves and the swell? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I have, I have, I have some. Okay. I'll, I'll try to explain uh, what I understand from this question. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the significant wave height can be further decomposed into significant wave height for the wind part of the spectra and the, for, for the swell part of the spectra, uh, then uh, uh, the significant wave height uh, and both components are provided by the MedWave system. Uh, then uh, uh, we have the wave height, which, which can be thought as the distance between uh, trough and uh, uh, crest. It is related to the uh, significant wave height, but, uh, well, um, uh, also, let's say here that uh, swell is uh, uh, the distant, I mean, the distant waves that propagate to an area 
uh, and uh, the wind uh, part of the spectrum or wind waves is the uh, wave components that are directly uh, affected by the wind. Um, well, if uh, if Ismail would like to uh, um, uh, make the question more clear at some parts, I would be happy to continue the uh, my answer. But uh, this is for the time being. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, there is another one about the wind. Uh, can we estimate the ten meter wind velocity from the wind force component of the spectrum? Well, uh, yes, there are approximate solutions, but uh, uh, um, usually the, the 10 meter wind velocity is measured or is given by uh, atmospheric model. It is measured by buoys, it is measured by, um, um, by satellites. Uh, um, so, uh, well, if uh, the user wants to uh, go the uh, the other way around, so starting from uh, what we give as a uh, uh, as a spectrum, uh, there are some approximate, uh, let's say, uh, relations to do that. But uh, I don't see the reason to to go that way. Okay. Okay. There is, uh, uh, in, 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 in general, the, the, the wind, the wind is, is forcing the, the wave spectrum. Uh, there are uh, there is a source term, the wind source term inside the, the any 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 wave model. Uh, so there is a, a, a relation uh, of the wind uh, uh, with the wave spectrum. So uh, by integrating the wave spectrum. Uh, the two things can be related, but uh, I, I repeat, uh, it is better to go directly to what is measured from uh, buoys or the satellites or what is given from uh, an atmospheric model that usually is used to force uh, the uh, wave model. Okay, thank you. So, uh, are wave models uh, general ones or specific to a given region? Well, uh, what I understand from this question is uh, that, okay, we use uh, 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 well-known state-of-the-art models like uh, WAM, Wave Watch or Swan. Uh, uh, how we do the implementation, we do uh, proper tuning in order to be able to uh, estimate uh, things like uh, significant wave height uh, or mean wave uh, period that we have from observations in, the, in an optimal way. So, uh, we use uh, general ones, but we do specific tuning uh, to uh, uh, the area where we, we want to model, and according also to the atmospheric forcing to the winds that we want to uh, that we use to force the, the model. And in the Med C, we did the tuning of the one model. Okay, okay, thank you, Marcus. There is a question, but actually, I'm, I'm not sure it's uh, for you to answer. And I, 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 I will try it. So, <laughs> where we can find satellite images and the most commonly used techniques for ca characterizing coastal current variations by analyzing the evolution of two bit plumes. And now well, I don't know if <laughs> you uh, 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 yeah, Okay, so for Lamri, we can. Uh, I don't feel that I can answer this question. Lamry. Yeah, sure. We can come back to, to you this question in, uh, after. Okay, then uh, let's see if uh, there's uh, any other question coming. Well, somebody's typing this, so mm -hmm, keep the time for the person to type. And again, I invite uh, if you have any specific question on the exercises or on the notebooks, uh, if you want to have, if you want any comments. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to publish the question is, uh, how do you estimate the efficiency of the wave models in the 
different parts of the MAD because the bathymetry doesn't have a high resolution there. Well, uh, these are two different things. In order to estimate uh, the, okay, uh, the bathymetry, if we want to do further downscale uh, the uh, Medway solution in the coastal area of the uh, southern uh, uh, Med, it is an issue. But in order to estimate the efficiency of uh, our solution, uh, we use uh, whatever data is available uh, from satellites and uh, buoys. Uh, for the southern part of the Med is uh, satellites. So for, for that, uh, from f with this data and uh, by the by statistical uh, by statistical tools like uh, RMS difference, uh, uh, scatter index, uh, correlation, uh, we can we can have an idea how uh, an exact idea how the uh, uh, model our our wave solution uh, uh, compares with reality, and as uh, the other two um, uh, uh, production units, bio and uh, uh, currents, we have uh, uh, we give different uh, statistics for sixteen uh, regions of the Mediterranean Sea, including of including of course the southern part. Uh, uh, and I repeat, uh, the bathymetry uh, could affect uh, uh, efficiency of uh, wave forecasting uh, uh, if one uh, uh, would like to further downscale if the solution go to the uh, um, to a coastal uh, to a coastal application um, um, for for the for the uh, for the resolution that we we now have the one twenty four. I don't feel that the uh, 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 exact bathymetry. We have, of course, a, a gap of bathymetry, which is uh, uh, to a large extent uh, uh, realistic. But uh, if there are uh, any, uh, if there are issues of uh, uh, bathymetric data that we don't know uh, in the southern part, this would affect uh, not the general solution, but uh, um, most probably. Uh, the downscaled ones in coastal areas of the southern Med. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. I think we have time for another question, and it's, it's this one. It's uh, how are waves and currents coupled? Okay. So uh, for um, for the wave part, uh, for the Med waves, uh, uh, we are doing a, a offline uh, coupling uh, between uh, uh, wave spectrum and uh, currents uh, given by uh, the uh, Med physics. Uh, it is one-way coupling. So, uh, first of all, the currents are uh, uh, responsible for wave refraction. Uh, there is a term in the one model, uh, and uh, we force uh, the, the one model with the currents taken from uh, metaphysics. So this is uh, one part. In general, uh, the coupling between uh, waves and currents is a uh, uh, more uh, um, um, important issue. Uh, uh, for sure, uh, there is a Stokes uh, drift uh, velocity uh, there is a um, uh, wave dissipated energy and uh, uh, wave um, momentum due to the, the um, breaking of waves that uh, uh, has to be passed uh, to the hydrodynamic model uh, in order to properly uh, uh, couple the two things. For the time being, uh, for medwave solution, we are offline coupled with uh, currents uh, in order to calculate the wave refraction. And for the physical model, uh, uh, there is a, 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 a wave module uh, based on uh, wave watch that provides a uh, drag coefficient uh, to the uh, uh, physical solution, and the uh, hydrodynamic model provides uh, currents to that uh, module. I hope I answered the, the, the question. I think so. And. Um... Okay, I do not see other questions. Uh, there is just one person typing. Oh, yes, there is. Okay. <laughs> Wait. Um, okay. Are you planning to produce a reanalysis of the waves in the MED in the future? Uh, yes. Uh, we are currently producing uh, the new reanalysis based on ERA 5. 
uh, which is the atmospheric uh, reanalysis uh, by produced by ECMWF uh, at uh, uh, approximately 30 kilometer resolution. Uh, our new reanalysis will be uh, 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 at the 124 uh, resolution, spatial resolution, uh, covering the period 1993 to uh, 2019. Uh, it will have data simulation of all available satellite observations and will be released uh, uh, March, February, March uh, 2021. So, yes. It will be an extended reanalysis based on ERA-5 atmospheric uh, forcing, based on ERA-5 uh, 10 meter winds, and all the available uh, satellite observations assimilated into the uh, uh, reanalysis uh, system. Okay, thank you, Maskis. Uh, just the very last one. Uh, if I understand correctly, is it we current modeling using ICDP or not? Or is it doing without? Oh, ICPD, uh, I don't get, I, I mean, I cannot, uh, I need more details to ask, okay. uh, to, ask this, to, answer, <laughs> to answer this question. Okay, so maybe. Uh, we ACPD, will... well, pro probably, uh, I don't know the ACPD, why current modeling using ACPD and without it? Well, so if anybody wants to 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 uh, write uh, more clearly, then we maybe you can also answer in the chat because I think we yes, need to. Yes, 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 we can do. I mean, but we need some yeah. more clarifications on that. Sure, I or think we do a Google, a Google, a Google, a Google uh, search for the ACPD. I don't get it right now. Okay. 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 Uh, I think uh, I think we can close. So I think there is another question about uh, oh no, a wave high data from Signal Three. Well, oh, uh, sorry, this yeah. can be downloaded directly from CMEMS. Uh, for the UMED site, I don't know, but uh, for C for CMEMS uh, FTP site, the data are available. We download them in order to data simulation into the system. So I advise the user to use the CMEMS uh, um, website. Website, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, Marcus, and also to thank you. the Alice who were on thank the back. <laughs> so thank you again. And uh, okay, so uh, now, uh, as it was announced uh, in the previous uh, uh, w uh, the briefing session, we have uh, a session about the GIS tool. So there are colleagues from uh, Novelties uh, that will uh, uh, introduce you to this uh, GIS tools. Uh, so we have Matilde and Benson connected. And uh, they will uh, first introduce you uh, to the practical session, uh, what is available uh, also in the YouTube channel uh, for uh, um, as a, a, a training, I mean, as a, a tutorial. And then uh, you can ask uh, questions to them as well. So I pass the floor to uh, Mathilde and to Vincent. Yes, uh, thank you, Paola. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, my name is uh, Mathilde Cancé and I am with uh, Vincent Montet, uh, my colleague who is a specialist in the, uh, these tools. And um, so, the idea is to... Uh, yes? It's okay. Um, so, um, we had a, a question about uh, the product uh, that were used for this uh, uh, training session. Um, so, actually, we um, here are a bit more information about these uh, products. Uh, the idea was to first look at the um, seasonal evolution of the um, of some typical parameters in the Mediterranean Sea, such as the temperature. The, the mixed uh, layer depths and also the currents. So to do that, we use the physical model uh, analysis products, the monthly means products. And then we had a second part about the waves 
uh, where we use the, the model uh, waves products, the Harley means uh, product, and also uh, wave satellite observations with the uh, daily maps. And uh, more precisely, we extracted the data uh, for the physical model monthly means product for the whole year 2019 uh, for a number of parameters. And uh, for the, the, the wave products, we considered a short period in uh, June 2020. Uh, of course, you can find all this information in the user manual that we uh, provided with the, the videos that are available on uh, YouTube. And uh, you can download the data uh, by yourself and do exactly the same exercise as the, what we propose in the, in the videos. But also, of course, you can do uh, your uh, own um, applications uh, using different uh, time periods or different products. The idea is just to show you how to explore the CMIMS products with the GIS tool and um, how to visualize the data and also how to uh, add uh, other information from a, another portal such as eModnet to add contextual uh, information such as uh, ship density or ocean energy uh, data uh, sites or any other information. So uh, on the Emanet portal, you can find many, many uh, different uh, information sources uh, that give contextual uh, uh, information. And um, so that, that was the idea. And uh, then I, I leave the floor to, to Vincent who will uh, uh, give a bit more details about um, uh, the, the, the different uh, visualization tools we use uh, in this uh, training session. And uh, of course, if you have a question, uh, you can ask them uh, uh, and we'll try to answer. So, Vincent? So, hello, everybody. I'm Vincent from Novelties. So I, I did the, the, the training for the GIS. Um, so basically, um, the idea was to uh, display the uh, Siemens data. Siemens data come in a, in a format, the NetCDF format, which is it, uh, complex. Uh, it can be a 2D or 3D or 4D, even 4D uh, data. And uh, so to display this data on a GIS tool, which is uh, essentially a 2D uh, tool. Uh, so it requires a bit of um, you know, thinking and uh, you have to, to, to know what you are, what you are doing. <coughs> um, so uh, if you have any, any questions, it, it, it will help me. So uh, then I can answer something uh, specifically. Uh, but the idea is to, to use, uh, first to use QGIS so why do we use QGIS? Because there are other uh, GIS tools. Uh, QGIS is the uh, open source, it's free, it's available for everybody. It's, um, there's a community uh, developing QGIS and is, there are updates um, very, very often. So it's, uh, it's quite an active uh, program, uh, open source program. Um, there is another uh, GIS tool which is uh, the, um, very much used is called ArcGIS, but ArcGIS is uh, it's licensed, so you have to pay for it. So uh, this is why we use uh, QGIS. Uh, QGIS is, is it's good; it has its limitation, but it's it's pretty good. Um, so what shall I say to you? So yeah, the <coughs> the data basically the, the Siemens data come in NetCDF. Uh, NetCDF is uh, <clears throat> displayed in QGIS as a, as a raster uh, map, so it's a, as a raster 2D map. So uh, basically, when you uh, open the NetCDF, uh, first you have to select the variables you want to uh, to display, and uh, <clears throat> after you have to within this variable you have to select which uh, band you want to to display, and the band is uh, so it can be um, if it's a 3D data, 
uh, it can be uh, the, the depth. So you have to select which depth you want to, uh, to display the data. If it's, four, it's 4D, you have to select the, the depth and the, the, the time as well. And uh, QGIS is uh, only displays one band at a time. So uh, also one, one difficulty is to, uh, to show how the, the data uh, uh, changes through time. <clears throat> and uh, we try to, to show this in the, in the training. So basically you have to display all the, all the layers, uh, selecting the bands. And, uh, and then you have to browse through these different layers to see how the data uh, changes through the time. And uh, I hope it's pretty clear in the, in the training. Um, so time is not, uh, it's one difficulty in, in QGIS. Uh, the other difficulties uh, <clears throat> also we were trying to, to show is to demonstrate is uh, how to overlay data because uh, okay data come in the, in the raster <clears throat> and uh, if you overlay uh, sometimes you don't see what's underneath and so uh, we can use transparency uh, we can also uh, uh, what we, we we did in this training is to to convert uh, raster data into vector data. Uh, so uh, you can uh, represent uh, the, the data as, a, as an arrow. For example, the, the wave direction and height was uh, uh, rendered as an arrow, uh, arrows. And the arrows show the direction and the, the color of the arrow shows the, uh, the height of the, of the data. And uh, this is one mean to, uh, to be able to, to see the information and, and to uh, so to have some uh, under, underneath data some overlay. Um, okay, so if you have any more information, I'm, I would be happy to uh, to answer. If you have any any questions. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mathilde and Vincent. So, if there is any additional question on the chat for the GIS tools. There are people typing, so I guess uh, <laughs> we need to wait a few seconds. So in the meantime, as, we, as uh, it was already said, you may find the material on the YouTube channel, right? With uh, all the, the exercises. Um, okay, there is one, uh, I'm going to switch to the question. Okay, do you plan to develop other exercises in the future? Uh, uh, yes, yes, so we have already developed uh, another um, GIST training um, session on the Baltic Sea with different uh, products. And uh, we are currently developing a, a third uh, one uh, in the Arctic Ocean with a sea ice product in particular. So, in fact, we try to change the region. Uh, each time and also to change the products and uh, add uh, uh, new um, visualization tools or new uh, yes new ways to look at the, the data mm -hmm. or, or different products each time so the idea is to provide a, a variety of uh, exercises that can be reproduced uh, in any other region and uh, with a, different uh, CMEMS products. Um, and, uh, okay. Yeah. There is a question about, uh, I don't know if it's too, <laughs> too difficult, how you can use the QGIS or SNAP to differentiate the water and the land? Okay, yes, there are um, uh, ways to uh, load some uh, 
lengthy mask. And uh, actually, this will be part of the next training, actually. I, I'm, I'm putting this in the next training. Yeah. So uh, either you, uh, in this training, actually, uh, uh, we had a background map. So it shows the, the sea and the land. So uh, all, the, all the data is overlaid on top of a background map. So you can, we can re really see. And uh, for the next training, uh, I use just, uh, just lines uh, really to uh, to differentiate the land and the sea so it's it's easy to to do and for so you there are different ways to put uh, background maps uh, okay. either you use uh, you can use plugin plugin or you can use uh, wms uh, data yeah so okay thank you there is another question besides data about the water quality parameters, how you insert surface data, where they are they found or are they included within the QGIS platform? I'm not sure, but uh, what uh, is meant by surface data? The surface data is in, this, uh, in this context. <laughs> Okay, so maybe. <laughs> but actually, we, we use. Sorry. So I can answer the, the last part. No, of I was the saying question. if the person. Yeah, the okay. in the QGIS, QGIS when you start QGIS, there is no data, at all. So uh, basically, every all the data has to be uh, to be loaded. So there are different sources where you can find data. You can find from the internet. You can download, or you can use. Uh, uh, server protocols like WFS or WMS, or you can use plugin also, which provides some data. So, uh, but by default, QGIS is empty. <laughs> so yes. it's not included, okay. basically. And so we show during the, 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 the training session how to uh, upload, mm. or to put this uh, information in, in QGIS. So, first all the background maps and then the the smith's product and all the other information that we want to visualize yeah. So, yeah. And, the yeah. Product yeah. Data. and the 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 person actually said that the data he was thinking about was the cost line so that's what he meant for surface data so if you can include the cost lines uh, but uh, as you said, uh, you have to upload yeah, any kind of data. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was mentioning. But uh, it's my it's called land sea mask or coastline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for yeah. the next training, I, uh, I use this. Okay, thank you. Uh, and just for everybody to remind that the, the exercises uh, are available on the YouTube channel. So they weren't part of the uh, notebook exercises you may find in the Jupyter Hub, but they were uh, in the, they are available in the, the YouTube channel. So there are two different places where you find the, the exercises. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's it's, uh, it's a question actually for you, but do you plan to organize activities concerning water quality criteria in the future? Um, for the for the Baltic Sea, we looked at uh, different uh, products, and um, well, for the moment uh, we do, uh, don't think we have any no. ex no. example with the bio uh, model product. But uh, of course, this can be done using exactly the same scheme as the one we show for the other uh, CMEMS products. The idea is just to show how to uh, load the, the data, the, the NetCDF products, and then select the, the variables we want to visualize. So the process is the same, uh, whatever the product, actually. And then uh, the idea of the different trainings uh, is to to show uh, different tools. So, for example, in this uh, training for the METSI, we show how to plot the currents uh, as arrows, as uh, Vincent said, and also the, the wave directions. Um, 
for the, the Arctic Ocean. Uh, the idea is to show how to have a, a stereographic uh, a projection, which is uh, something very specific to the Arctic, uh, but can be used uh, for other regions, uh, for, the, for the Antarctic also, for example. So the idea is to, to have different, uh, to, to show different tools each time, each time, but uh, also to, to have some uh, general uh, uh, ways of visualization that can be uh, reproduced mm -hmm. for any kind of, uh, of data. So maybe we don't have specific exercises on this uh, quali water quality criteria, but uh, of course you can do it by yourself because uh, uh, it's the same way that you load the, the TDF products and, uh, and uh, visualize the data and uh, add some specific uh, layers that are linked with this uh, theme. Um, and uh, yes, the, the idea is to, to provide some general information and to show how to, to use uh, the Siemens product with this kind of tools. But, um, so we, we show exa examples, but, uh, but it can be uh, done with uh, any of the other uh, Siemens products. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the yeah, I think it's clear. So it's the, the procedures that is shown, uh, which is uh, uh, applicable to different kind of data. That's the, yeah, that's the main message, I guess. Yeah. Um, there is a question, but I'm not sure again if it's um, maybe for you, if, uh, if you plan to do tutorials also in R. And I don't know if it's uh, for you <laughs> or for or to, <laughs> to decide. But, uh, <laughs> okay, no, actually it was replied, it was replied by Fabrizio, so okay, that's fine. <laughs> and, uh, okay, um, I do not see any, any other specific question. So also uh, for the participants in the chat, you may find the link to the uh, GIS videos. And... Um, so someone is typing, so we wait uh, a few more uh, seconds to see if there are other questions for the GIS tools. Yeah, that, that's the link to the, to the videos uh, on the YouTube channel. Is there any other question? There is a question about the old maps. Maybe I can answer. Yeah, can I'm looking at that. Yeah, I was thinking if there was a, an answerable <laughs> question, but yes. Okay, so if you can advise on the use of the old maps uh, from back to the 19th, to the recent uh, with the recent uh, satellite image to the final coastal evolution. Uh, yeah, the, there is a tool in QGIS where you can. Uh, uh, geolocalize so you can uh, load a, a map or an, any um, any image basically and then you can uh, geolocalize it with using different points and then uh, when it's geolocalized it's it's overlay uh, like a map and you can uh, you, you can compare with other uh, other, other maps or new maps so uh, yes there's a way to do this in QGC it's it's okay. uh, uh, I can't remember exactly in which it's, it's for it's in a raster uh, in a raster menu. There is a geolocalization. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, I think uh, it's the, the same person 
uh, as also said that because it is not the same scale at all, like, uh, you know, putting together the, the 19th uh, map with the, the most the satellite one. So yes, then there is a way to match. Of course. Uh, but in QGIS, the scale is not uh, okay. it's a problem because you can, you can zoom in and out, so you can uh, select your scale. Okay, so it can be done. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a question about the code, but it was answered um, again. So the, the codes are freely, can be freely used. So you can uh, uh, use it for your own purposes. Um, I do not see any other specific questions. So I'll, we can give a couple of more minutes if you want to type any other questions for the GIS. So you said that the, uh, there is one uh, another example coming for the for the Arctic, right? Yes. Yes, we are working on it. Yeah, we are just finalizing the this okay. training. Yeah. Okay. We we really base on the. So it, <laughs> it will be based on how do we reproject the data and on, uh, on the North Pole because it's not uh, necessary. Uh, straightforward <laughs> right okay um i do not see other questions so shall we say that it's uh we can close i guess okay thank you very much uh, oh wait maybe there is something sorry <laughs> there is one last at the very last oh no there is actually a reply so okay no. Okay, so I thank very much uh, Mathilde and Vincent for uh, the replies to the GIS tools. Uh, as we said, you can uh, go to the um, uh, YouTube channel to check on the exercises and also on the dates. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, well, I, I also, from my side, I thank all the participants. Uh, it was a very active uh, uh, the briefing sessions today many questions we are happy that you have uh, uh, been uh, uh, so reactive um, as uh, it was said uh, you will have the opportunity to continue your exercises on the on the Jupyter uh, notebooks um, I also thank very much all the experts today and uh, the past days uh, for the big efforts and the preparation of all the materials that have been shared with you and for uh, uh, the availabilities to, to, you know, to interact uh, with uh, the participants. Um, so from my side, I think that's all. And thank you, uh, of course, uh, uh, Vincent and uh, Fabrice for the organization. Uh, hope to see everybody soon. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I would like to add something as well. Can I, Paola? Uh, sure, okay. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so, so, Paola told you, told you the most part of the thing. We would like to thank you very much for your participation. I hope you enjoy this, this format of uh, online training. Uh, once again, we do apologize about the problem we had with the Jupyter Access. But as Paola told you, uh, you have access to the Jupyter Hub and uh, to the notebook dedicated to this workshop during one year. So plenty of time to practice for you. Uh, one more thing, we will have the, our next training, the 29th of September, dedicated to the Iberian, Biscay, uh, and Island region. So. Uh, check our website or answer to your invitation. Uh, it will be scheduled scheduled very soon in our website. And we are looking forward to seeing you in this training. Thank you again for your participation. And uh, I, we hope to see you online very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.